I'm Shri Bose, I'm 17 years old, and I am the grand prize winner of Google's first ever science fair. When I was 15, my grandfather died of cancer. I was so close to him and wanted to do something. I wanted to fight this disease and help others survive. I wanted to be involved in cancer research and see what was out there. So I started writing to all the local labs and professors, trying to find a way to get involved. I guess no one wanted a high school student. I received dozens of rejections, but it didn't stop me. I kept writing to universities until I found a mentor to take me on, Dr. Alokananda Basu. And that's how I became involved in cancer research at 15 years old. My project grew out of my work in the field. Chemotherapy patients can develop resistance to certain drugs, and I worked on finding a way to battle that resistance and make treatment more effective again. The feeling of accomplishment when you actually have gone through the entire process of finding your own problem and getting a hypothesis and doing your tests and getting your results is just the most amazing feeling. I've been participating in science fairs since I was a little kid, but nothing compares to winning the Google Science Fair. I got to meet with President Obama, I spoke at TEDx Women, and I had the honor of being named one of Glamour Magazine's Amazing Young Women of the Year. Doing a science fair isn't about coming up with a project. It starts with thinking of an entire field that you're interested in and that you're passionate about and something that you can really enjoy doing. Find a field that you really love and then stick with it and just believe that whatever work you're doing will pay off because it will. Um, so today, we've heard a lot of stories, and I'm here to tell you yet another one. But this one is not just my story. It's the story of the lucky few who refuse to stop dreaming, the few who break the mold, and the few that can inspire the rest of us. This is much, much more than just my story. So to start the story off, I want you to imagine a first grade classroom. And this is a first grade classroom where my two worried parents once sat, waiting for a teacher's advice on how to handle my older brother. Now, my older brother was a smart kid. I mean, he was a second grader, and he was already doing math at the fifth grade level, and he was way advanced in science as well. And he wouldn't stop asking questions. And my parents were worried. They knew it was hard to be a second grader among fifth graders, and so they went into this classroom, and they asked that teacher for a little bit of advice. What, what, what can we do? And what they heard in that classroom would change this story completely. Three words, dumb him down. The words of a teacher who is trying to handle a student who's curious, who won't stop questioning, who's really interested in what they're doing, dumb them down. Lucky for me, my dad refused to do this. And instead, he went on and taught my brother himself. And when he didn't know something, he made sure that my brother knew. He didn't know. He didn't fall into the pitfalls that most parents do, the, oh, shh, that's not important for you to know, or the, that's right because I say it's right. And we've all heard that one. Instead, he taught by example. And he taught my brother the importance of being able to just go and find out when it was something you didn't know, which, years later, is what my brother ended up passing on to me. This idea of finding something fascinating and then going off and discovering yourself when you didn't know. And that's, that's not to say my initial fascinations were exactly, how to lightly put this, the most noble. In second grade, I decided my fascination was one of the leading concerns for children under the age of 12, namely my dislike for my vegetables didn't want to eat them, wasn't going to do it. And since I was the master of excuses, I decided it was because they were green, right? Because we all want to eat some multicolored vegetables somewhere. Um, and so what I decided to do is I took a spinach plant, injected it with blue food coloring, and made exciting multicolored vegetables for kids. I had big dreams back then. 
Um, in fifth grade, my fascination was my dislike for taking out the trash and doing my chores. So, again, since I knew I could do something, I went out and made a remote-controlled garbage can. Now, all joking aside, I really didn't discover my legitimate passion until ninth grade biology, when I was introduced to this world where these tiny little cells could come together and billions of them could do something really incredible. And that's when I fell in love. And when my grandfather passed away of cancer, I decided I wanted to do something. I wanted to understand. But unlike all of those times before, I had no idea what I could do. I wanted to understand. I wanted to know why tiny little changes in these cells could make a person so sick. But I didn't know where to go. I mean, I didn't know the opportunities that were out there for me. But I decided that I was going to do something. I didn't know what, but I was going to do something. I was going to step beyond the bounds of what I learned in class, and I was going to follow my fascination. So from there, the sky was the limit. Um, I started emailing professors, and after rejection upon rejection, I finally, finally found a professor, Dr. Basu, who was willing to take me on. And I began cancer research at the age of 15, eventually culminating in winning the Google Global Science Fair for my work with drug resistance in ovarian cancer. The best part of my work wasn't the awards or the recognition. It was really seeing the sort of impact I could have if I followed what I was really passionate about, if I followed what I was really finding fascinating. And that's, that's when I discovered um, that those moments were just indescribable. There were moments like getting to stand on stage in front of 100 women who had battled ovarian cancer throughout their entire life and tell them about my research, tell them what my research meant, and say how it would make treatment more effective. And then to have these women come up to me afterwards and hug me and say that they were 22 or 25 when they first were diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and that seeing somebody so young and so passionate and excited about working in this field gave them hope. It was moments like that just that just take your breath away, that make you realize the kind of difference you can have. I started cancer research because I wanted to understand, that I wanted to do something. And I could have never done that unless I had stepped beyond what I knew I could do and started creating what I knew I could do. So in the end, here's where I began. I was pretty cute back then. Um, just a toddler in a box. Um, and in fact, that's really where all of us begin. We're all just little kids in boxes of expectations, expectations that maybe we put on ourselves or maybe school puts on what we should be doing or what society thinks we can do. And today, I challenge you to break out of those boxes, to change what you think you can and can't do. And the thing is, that can make all the difference in the world. I mean, for those for those parents who were sitting in that room and who heard those three words, dumb him down, and who refused. They set in motion this movement of breaking out of the mold that they could have never imagined, with my brother going on to inspire me and showing me that I could follow what I really loved, and then my work with doing science fairs and hoping to pass this idea on to so many more kids, whether it's through science fairs or through teaching second or seventh and sixth graders about cell biology. The world is changing. Science is changing. And so today, I challenge all of you in this audience to break out of your boxes, to teach for students. I want you to learn beyond just what is expected, to follow what you really love, even if it's a field that no one has even thought of yet. For those who are teaching, I challenge you to teach a wide variety of things and allow students to really find their own fascinations. Allow them the opportunity to follow that, to ask questions. Give them our chance. Because all of us, to some degree, are just like little kids in boxes, all with the opportunity to go out, break out, and do something really incredible. So now what we need to do is change those three words, the three words that we hear when we're dealing with kids who are excited and curious. Change those three words into something that can make a real difference, and that can end up changing the story of our world. Thank you so much.